This video talks about oxygen deprivation. Uh, this is from page 565, first day 2012. So if you want to follow along with me, please do so. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about hypoxia and hypoxemia. What is the difference between hypoxia and hypoxemia? To me, really, the difference, uh, hypoxia is when it's a chronic lack of oxygen or there's decreased oxygen um, delivery to the tissues, okay, but it's a chronic state. Hypoxemia, to me, is a more acute state, but hypoxemia, by definition, hypoxemia is the fact that the partial pressure of oxygen is going to be low in the artery. This is not about the vein, it's not, it's particularly in the artery. The partial pressure of oxygen, low partial pressure of oxygen in the artery is hypoxemia. And hypoxia is decreased oxygen delivery to the tissues. Okay, now let's talk about, you know, there is normal AA gradient and there is increased AA gradient under hypoxia. What are the normal AA gradient? Those is going to be high altitude and hypoventilation. Yes, there are going to be hypoxia, hypoxemia, but they're going to have a normal AA gradient. What about increased AA gradient? Well, VQ mismatch is the obvious one. Diffusion limitation is also increased AA gradient. Right to left shunning is also going to cause uh, hyp uh, hypoxemia with an increased AA gradient because, you know, there, then there will be a huge difference between the alveoli and the arteriole. Now, in the previous video, we did a question where you know, there was, uh, we had to calculate the alveolar gas tension. And in the alveolus, the oxygen was, you know, much higher than the arterial. And we decided that the A gradient was high, if you remember that question from the previous video. And we ruled out a diffusion limitation for that particular uh, question. That was because the question was what is increased and diffusion limitation, diffusion decreases. So uh, um, if you can relate that to that particular question in the previous video. So anyways, just wanted to tie in everything together. So increased AA gradient with hypoxemia is going to be VQ mismatch, diffusion limitation, and right to left shunting. Now let's talk about hypoxia. Hypoxia is going to be anemia. It's also going to be decreased cardiac output, cyanide pause poisoning, carbon monoxide poisoning. This is going to fall under hypoxia rather than hypoxemia. So let's try to do a question uh, on this topic. Uh, okay, so there is a 34-year-old man who had a motor vehicle accident. He was brought into the emergency department and he had a femoral fracture. He was uh, immediately, he has gone into surgery immediately. And three days after surgery, he comes to the emergency department with uh, dyspnea, with chest pain. He was also tachypneic, and his uh, arterial blood gas showed that it was about 60 millimeter mercury. Now, the question says, what is the main reason for his uh, hypoxemia? Well, in this patient, what did we have? This patient had a surgery. Three days after the surgery, he must have had a PE. That's why he's having tachypnea and chest pain and dyspnea. As a result, uh, the, there is going to be VQ mismatch, and VQ mismatch causes increased AA gradient. So the answer is going to be increased AA gradient. Let's talk about another scenario. Let's say that a patient has PaO2 normal, saturation normal, but oxygen content is low in the artery. What is the diagnosis? This patient ha is anemic from chronic blood loss, right? Just situations where you can see these kind of terms. So last question, kind of relating to blood flow. Let's say you have a 23-year-old military recruit who has to do high-intensity workout. So the question says, at the peak of workout, what is similar between arterial and, sorry, systemic and, uh, um, systemic and pulmonary circulation. So the peak of workout, it's going to be, what's going to be same? What's going to be same is going to be their blood flow. In fact, it doesn't have to be at the peak of exercise. Blood flow from the systemic to the pulmonary is going to be same at all times. The differences where you're going to see difference in systemic and uh, pulmonary circulation is that the pressure could be different. There could be a difference in pressure. There could be difference in oxygen content. But the, but the the flow from the systemic, from the pulmonary to the systemic circulation is going to be same at all times. 
So that's my take on the whole oxygen deprivation.